Dear fellow ophthalmologists, We all accept that transmission risk is present at every single moment at our workplace. Written instructions become gold standard to prevent our hospitals to become hotspots for transmission of infection. Training is the next important step. Entire team has to be on board, each one of us including security, housekeeping, driver, nurses, doctors, administrators from doorman to chairman. If one person does not follow the SOP for safety, entire chain is broken. We are sharing a comprehensive SOP for OPD work during COVID times. I hope it will be helpful to each one of you to get back to work safely. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. And let's all get back to work soon. This comprehensive presentation has topics like General Guidelines SOP during telephone appointments OPD etiquettes SOP at screening desk and so on. The presentation also contains various consent forms that will be required during this COVID era. General Guidelines Keep one meter distance from any person in general, even your co-workers. Do not touch your face unnecessarily. Wash hands every time you touch the skin of the patient. If you use gloves, immediately discard in red BMW bin after use. Remember gloves are like dirty hands after you have used them for one patient. You will be now contaminating all surfaces you touch. Wash hands on entry, exit and every one hour for 20 seconds. Wear masks at all times when in clinic. All doors, windows in OPD to be kept open. Unless needed otherwise. Standard operating procedures for Telephone appointments Greet caller Inform caller that we will be seeing only patients with eye emergencies till the lockdown is lifted. Note down details of non-emergency patients for later use. Take down patient demographic details. Confirm appointment time and doctor who will be seeing patient. Space appointments as per plan of four patients per hour. Gently ask patient whether they are in good health or are having any symptoms. Like cough, fever. If they are, then inform them that a doctor will talk to them before the appointment is confirmed. Connect available doctor to such a patient to determine if there is an eye emergency. Request patient to go through our WhatsApp message which clearly informs them of our OPD etiquette, which will be sent on their registered mobile number before coming to the center. Send WhatsApp message to registered mobile number. OPD etiquettes. Message sent to patients with appointments is read as follows. Dear Sir slash Madam. Thank you for taking appointment at Zayminder. We look forward to seeing you soon. Kindly go through the points before visit our center. Kindly note only one attendant is allowed. Kindly avoid bringing children to the hospital unless they are the patients. The patients and the attendant should wear mask or buy one from our center. Please do not bring your old file. Avoid cash payments. Please bring a pen with you to fill out the form. Kindly bring minimum personal things like bag extra. Standard Operating Procedures at Screening Desk Screening Desk is cordoned off from waiting area by a barrier. When patient and attendant approach Screening Desk, staff manning the desk will give them a disposable mask from the clinic which they have to use. They are requested to leave their own mask outside if they are using one already. Make sure they wear a mask. Confirm their appointment time. If it is a walk-in patient, Seat him or her on chair placed outside clinic and inform that they will be attended to after the appointment patients who are already waiting. Check body temperature of patient and attendant with non-contact thermometer. Note the temperature on COVID questionnaire. Give them the same questionnaire on which their body temperature is noted and also the declaration form. Ask them to fill them out preferably with their own pen. Drop into tray kept at desk. Again confirm that all the responses in questionnaire are no. Check forms for completeness. Staff should countersign the form. Declaration slash screening form for COVID-19 infection is as follows. 
to ensure your safety and the safety of the doctors and hospital staff who are trying to help you with your eye condition and for the safety of the other patients visiting the hospital. As per the guidelines issued by Government of India and WHO, we need the following particulars before we take you up for consultation. Please note that in case of any event in the future, if any of the below giving details are found to be false and not correct, strict action may be initiated against you and your family members as per law. The name of patient. Age. Sex. An address. Mobile know whether verified or not. Alternate mobile know whether verified or not. And email details are collected. This is COVID-19 questionnaire. That has to be filled by either the patient or his or her accompanying relative. The questionnaire should be verified by the staff and the staff should mention the date and time in the space provided below. The COVID-19 questionnaire contains the following questions. Do you or your family members have symptoms of Fever, cough, sneezing, sore throat, fatigue, myalgia, mention number if yes. Do you have difficulty in breathing? Do you have any of the following? Diabetes, hypertension, asthma, lung disease, cardiac, epilepsy, mention number if yes. Have you traveled outside county in past 30 days? If yes mention the country name. Have you traveled inside India to other cities in past 15 days? If yes, mention the city name. Exposure to a confirmed COVID-19 case or to suspicious patient in last 15 days. Have you visited a health care facility in the past two weeks? COVID-19 Pandemic Ophthalmic Treatment Consent Form the consent form should be signed by the patient or the attendant and verified by the staff with date and time mentioned in the space provided. The consent form reads as follows. I understand the novel coronavirus causes the disease known as COVID-19. I understand the novel coronavirus has unknown and long incubation period during which carriers of the virus may not show symptoms and still be contagious. Even though lockdown is lifted. In the wake of the current coronavirus threat pandemic, present all over the world, I have come to say mind your microsurgical eye center by myself or referred by somebody else for my eye treatment. If I am an asymptomatic carrier, with no discomfort or symptoms present, but virus still present hidden in my body, or an undiagnosed patient with COVID-19, I suspect it may endanger doctors and hospital staff. It is my responsibility to take appropriate precautions and to follow the protocols prescribed by the hospital staff. I am aware that I may get an infection from the hospital or from a doctor, or other patients in the hospital, and I will take every precaution to prevent this from happening, but I will not at all hold doctors and hospital staff accountable if such infection occurs to me or my accompanying persons. In case I or my attendant gets the COVID-19 infection after the visit to the hospital, I will inform the hospital authorities at the earliest, so that appropriate tracking of the patients, attendants and hospital staff present on the day of my visit can be done. I verify the information I have provided on this form and in the questionnaire over leaf is truthful and accurate. I knowingly and willingly consent to necessary investigations and treatment completed during the COVID-19 pandemic. If I hide my facts in relevant details and because of my knowing or unknowing behavior or action the hospital staff gets infected, I may be held responsible and legal action may be initiated against me and my family members and I may be responsible for appropriate compensation in the court of law. Standard Operating Procedures at Registration Desk if answer to any of the questions in the COVID questionnaire is yes or patient is febrile as per recorded temperature or has red eyes, fast track patient into consultation ASAP. If patients can complete registration and payment on their own, attendants can be requested to wait outside, preferably in their own vehicles. Only attendants of vulnerable patients need to be allowed inside. Patient plus slash attendant has to proceed first for hand wash with soap and water. Instruct them to avoid touching any surface as far as possible. Staff move straight to registration desk. 
patient then heads to registration desk. Complete registration formalities with staff entering all details as per form already filled out. Patients instructed to stay away from desk which will be cordoned off by a barrier. All papers in the straight to be filed only after 72 hours. To try and make payments through mobile apps. Currency to be avoided as far as possible. Use earbuds to enter password and credit card machine. Discard but in appropriate bin. Write down token number on file and direct patient to designated, numbered chair in waiting area. If the patient already has visited us before, just enter name and token number on a paper and give to patient co-coordinators. Attendant to wait outside and can come in, if necessary when patient's turn comes. If it is a high-risk patient, febrile or COVID symptoms plus, attendant to complete registration formalities and patient to be taken directly designated room. Standard operating procedure for waiting area. Keep it as empty as possible. Reduce waiting time. Place single chairs with a 1 meter spacing between them. Mark out these on the floor with bright tape to remain as semi-permanent slots. Put stickers on chairs with token numbers in large font. No reading material to be kept here. Display patient or staff education posters here. The dilatation guidelines are as follows. Avoid touching patient while instilling dilating drops. Instruct patients to pull lower lid down by themselves while drop is being instilled. If you have to touch patient, use a bud to pull lower lid down. Or use disposable gloves. Standard operating procedure for staff and doctor's entry to hospital is as follows. If you are suffering from any COVID-related symptoms, please inform manager and do not attend work. Take appropriate precautions and treatment. Avoid bringing handbags and wearing watches, rings, bangles to clinic. Keep your personal belongings locked in your vehicle. Long hair to be kept neatly tied up. Mobile phones may be brought in a Ziploc cover. Go to new extension, remove footwear, wash hands, change to hospital outfit. Check body temperature, enter and register maintained along with attendance. Wear footwear. Enter main clinic. Remove footwear. Change to clinic footwear. Wash hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. Wear cloth cap, surgical mask and goggles. Everyone to wash hands with soap and water every hour. We could have a bell for this. Standard operating procedure. For optometrist. This is needed only if patient has reduced vision of recent origin. The SOP for optometrist is as follows. Take very brief history to reduce exposure time. No need to note down in software. Check vision and vision with pinhole. To R and acceptance only if instructed by doctor. Clean trial frame with spirit. Avoid NCT. Avoid CL trial. Standard operating procedure for consultation room goes as follows. Wear face shield when patient enters room. Doctor is ready with cap, mask and goggles or shield. Patient welcomed and made to sit at slit lamp. Gently instruct them to avoid touching the slit lamp. Take history with patient seated at slit lamp and attendant standing at door. Doctor to sit on desk chair and not at slit lamp during history taking. No chair to be kept adjacent to desk. Move to slit lamp chair. Examine patient. Keep conversation to the minimum at slit lamp. Avoid touching patient. Use disposable non-sterile gloves if you expect any physical contact with patient. Try not to touch any part of slit lamp with the same hand used to touch patient. Avoid dilatation as far as possible. Return to desk chair. Type out case details or findings in software. Print prescription and explain to patient. Instruct patient to go outside and wait at optical counter area. Encourage them to take appointments prior to any follow-up visit, preferably telemedicine consultation where feasible. Give file to staff outside. Assistant with gloved hands to clean slit lamp chin and forehead rest with spirit. Remove face shield and hang on wall hook.
separate hooks to be placed on wall for each doctor. Clean keyboard, mouse and breath shield on slit lamp, doctor side first, every two hours. Avoid saxorinning or any lengthy procedure like dry eye evaluation. Standard operating procedure for consultation room 2 is as follows. Designated room to be used for examining all patients with red eyes or having COVID-like symptoms. Doctors to wear gown, disposable gloves while seeing such patients. All instructions to such patients to be given outside this room. Standard operating procedure for using instruments include the following. If any instrument like Lenstar, OCT or DRS is being used, staff to wear face shield kept in OCT room on wall hook. Wipe with alcohol wipes after use, inner side first. Clean chin and headrest with spirit. Protocol for exit from hospital for doctors and staff include the following steps. Remove clinic footwear. Change to your own. Go to new extension. Remove cap and put in wash bin for clothes. Remove goggles and clean with soap and water and keep it in a separate tray for each individual. Remove mask and dispose in appropriate bin. Mask should be removed at last. Change from hospital outfit. Wash hands with soap and water. Wash your face and neck before you leave. Collect all personal items. Check temperature again and enter in the log. Leave clinic. Finally take hot water bath immediately after reaching home. Housekeeping protocol for cleaning include the following. All metals and delicate instruments to be cleaned with 70% ethyl alcohol, 1% freshly prepared sodium hypochlorite for non-metals. Clean floors with 1% sodium hypochlorite 2 hourly. Start from corners and proceed towards door. Appendix A. Deep cleaning to be done if there is any contamination. High touch areas identified as help desk, entry door, locker, door knobs, handles, cupboards, light switches, railings to be cleaned with 1% sodium hypochlorite 4 times a day. Chairs in waiting area, including head and arm rest, to be cleaned with 70% alcohol 2 hourly. Clean wheelchair with 1% sodium hypochlorite. Do fogging of entire hospital on weekly basis. Training and monitoring. Training? Train the housekeeping staff on. Cleaning? Social distancing. Wearing PPE at all times. Supervisor or monitoring. At screening area. Ensuring patients wash hands and don't touch surfaces. Ensure doctors and staff wear PPE. Supervise cleaning at appropriate times by housekeeping staff. Mix the solution, right quantity at right times. Standard operating procedures for hospital infection prevention and control. Good infection prevention and control practices should be adhered by all categories of healthcare workers at all times of patient care as we are at a high risk of infection. The standard recommendations to prevent infection spread include Standard precautions Contact precautions Respiratory precautions Airborne precautions Certain high-risk procedures Standard infection control precautions that all HCW need to follow is Hand hygiene Use of appropriate personal protective equipment PPE respiratory etiquettes Environmental disinfection Linen handling. Sharps disposal. Waste management. Hand hygiene. Effective hand washing. Hand hygiene is the most important measure during direct patient care. Know the HH moments and steps and perform at all opportunity. Choose either alcohol-based hand rub, 20-30 seconds, or hand wash with soap and water, 40-60 seconds. Avoid touching possibly contaminated areas slash objects. Ensure availability of alcohol-based hand rubs and hand wash facilities, preferably elbow-operated apps in clinical areas. Personal Protective Equipment, PPE. Please change into hospital dress as soon as you reach hospital, ensuring that you have not touched any surfaces. Keep your home dress carefully, safe for reuse when you are ready to leave work. 
Wear a triple-layered surgical mask while handling all patients. Wear N95 mask for examining high-risk patients. Surgical masks can be worn for 4-6 hours and N95 masks for 6-8 hours. Used N95 mask while caring for multiple patients, should be carefully handled and ideally discarded in yellow bin after use especially if you have had a suspected COVID patient. If not store your mask safely and reuse it after 4 days as recommended as per AIMS guidelines. Wear PPE before patient contact and remove after coming out of patient care area. Do not touch your face while wearing PPE. Wash hands before and after PPE wear. Disinfect reusable PPE between patient use. Sequence for putting on personal protective equipment, PPE. The type of PPE used will vary based on the level of precautions required, such as standard and contact, droplet or airborne infection isolation precautions. The procedure for putting on and removing PPE should be tailored to the specific type of PPE. Gum Fully cover torso from neck to knees, arms to end of wrists and wrap around the back. Fasten in back of neck and waist. Mask or respirator. Secure ties or elastic bands at middle of head and neck. Fit flexible band to nose bridge. Fit snug to face and below the chin. Fit check respirator. Goggles or face shield. Place over face and eyes and adjust to fit. Gloves. Extend to cover wrist or isolation gown. Use safe work practices to protect yourself and limit the spread of contamination. Keep hands away from face. Limit surfaces touched. Change gloves when torn or heavily contaminated. Perform hand hygiene. Environmental surface cleaning and disinfection. Have a scheduled cleaning plan based on the risk, considering the type of area and clinical activity. Clean environmental surfaces with detergent and water and disinfect using 70% alcohol, metallic and 1% sodium hypochlorite, non-metallic, contact time 30 minutes. 1% sodium hypochlorite should be freshly prepared every day and used. Floor and railing cleaning by three bucket system, one with plain water and one with detergent solution and one bucket for 1% sodium hypochlorite. Appendix A. First mop the area with the water and detergent solution after mopping clean the mop in plain water and squeeze it. Mop area again using 1% sodium hypochlorite after drying the area. Mop the floor starting at the far corner of the room and work towards the door. Frequency of cleaning? High touch surfaces, disinfection of high touch surfaces like doorknobs, telephone, stair rails, light switches, wall areas around oil it should be done every 3-4 hours, if a suspect patient is there, then 1-2 hours. Low touch surfaces, for low touch surfaces, walls, mirrors etc. Mopping, wiping should be done at least once daily. Cleaning staff should be attired in suitable PPE. Disposable gloves should be removed and discarded if they become soiled or damaged and a new pair worn. Cleaning staff should wash their hands with soap and water immediately after removing the PPE. Medical equipment disinfection. Use dedicated non-critical medical equipment for patients' stethoscope, BP cuff etc. Based on the equipment minus 70% alcohol, metallic, and 1% sodium hypochlorite, non-metallic, or follow manufacturer's instruction. Cleaning in clinical areas. For floors the process of disinfection includes detergent and 1% sodium hypochlorite, or an approved disinfectant routinely used. Lysol. The method is to use three buckets, one with plain water and detergent solution, one for Lysol dash. First mop the area with water and detergent solution after mopping clean the mop in plain water and squeeze it mop area again using Lysol after drying the area. For ceiling and walls use detergent or 1% sodium hypochlorite. The method employed here is damp dusting, should be done in straight lines that overlap one another. Doors and doorknobs. All doors to be washed with a brush. Refrigerators. Empty the fridge and store things appropriately. Defrost.
decontaminate and clean with detergent. Dry it properly and replace things. Equipment, equipment need to be disinfected. After every contact with suspected patient. All areas and surfaces of equipment, 1% sodium hypochlorite, as per manufacturer's instructions. Cleaning in non-clinical areas. General cleaning should be done with the help of detergent and water. 1% sodium hypochlorite can be used. Scrub floors with water and detergent. Clean with plain water. Allow to dry 1% sodium hypochlorite mopping can be done. Lockers or tables or cupboards or wardrobes or benches or shelves should be cleaned with the help of detergent and water and should be damp dusted. Mirrors and glass should be cleaned with detergent and water. Using water and a small quantity of detergent in a damp cloth. Wipe over the mirror and surroundings. Stainless steel or any other sink detergent and water. Furniture, telephone, chairs, privacy curtains should be cleaned with detergent and water and should be damp dusted with detergent. Lifts should be cleaned with detergent and water. The high touch points should be cleaned 3-4 times a day every 1-2 hours. Light switches should be cleaned with detergent and water and should be damp dusted, never wet, with detergent. Railings should be cleaned with detergent and 1% sodium hypochlorite. Three small bucket system as mentioned above should be damp dusted with water and detergent followed by disinfection with hypochlorite. Infection prevention and control, IPC, activity area-wise. OPD or clinic. Routine visits avoided. Post-op visits can be avoided in patients guided over the phone. Telemedicine guidelines to be followed for suitable patients, organization can have guidelines for the same. Patient placement 1 meter apart in waiting area. Fast track vulnerable patient. Prioritize red eye patients, viral conjunctivitis, guide them to the allocated consultation room. Doctor and assisting HCW should wear three layered surgical mask. Cleaning slash housekeeping staff. Three layered surgical mask, heavy duty gloves, cleaning, ideal. Organize the area with minimal equipment for easy decontamination with alcohol slash 1% sodium hypochlorite depending upon the material. Floor cleaned with 1% sodium hypochlorite or Lysol 2-3 times a day. Clean high touch points once every 3-4 hours. And wash, hand rub between patients and before and after PPE use. Restrict attendant for patients who don't require assistance. Follow waste disposal as per BMW rules. Ah. Non-elective surgeries to be postponed for at least four weeks. Linen handling. All used linen should be handled by HCWs with standard precautions. Curtains or fabrics preferably washed using hot water cycle. Wash with detergent at 70 degrees Celsius for at least 25 minutes. Biomedical Waste Management Biomedical Waste, BMW, shall be segregated as per the BMW rules which are already in place. Appendix A The table below is the guidelines for preparation of 1% sodium hypochlorite solution. Human Resources Task Staff roster to be maintained to trace back, in case of suspected COVID in patients, attendant staff, Separate teams on each day. Staff consent. Registers an OPD. Telemedicine follow-up appointments. Tracing suspected patients. Consent and undertaking form by staff of. Jimai and DR Microsurgical Life Center. Where staff names should be mentioned along with. Age. Sex. Designation. Mobile number and address should be mentioned in the space provided as shown. The consent is as follows. I understand the novel coronavirus causes the disease known as COVID-19. I understand the novel coronavirus has unknown and long incubation period during which carriers of the virus may not show symptoms and still be contagious. During the lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I have come to work to the hospital by my free will. If I am an asymptomatic carrier or an undiagnosed patient with COVID-19, I suspect it may endanger patients, doctors and hospital staff. 
It is my responsibility to take appropriate precautions and to follow the protocols prescribed by the hospital to prevent transmission. I am aware that I may get an infection from the hospital, or from the doctor and staff, or other patients in the hospital, and I will take every precaution to prevent this from happening, but I will not at all hold hospital, doctors and staff accountable if such infection occurs to me or to one of my family members. In case I or my family members get the COVID-19 infection after the visit to the hospital, I will inform the hospital administration at the earliest so that appropriate tracking of the patients, attendants and hospital staff present on the day of my visit can be done. I confirm that the information I have provided on this form and in the questionnaire over leaf is truthful and accurate. I knowingly and willingly consent to work during COVID-19 pandemic. I understand that by my hiding any facts or by not following protocols, if I become the source of transmission, I may be held responsible in the court of law. The consent should then be signed by the staff in the space provided below. COVID-19 questionnaire for staff include the following questions. Do you or your family members have symptoms of fever, cough, sneezing, sore, throat, fatigue, myalgia? Mention number if yes. Will you self-declare if your status changes? Do you have difficulty in breathing? Do you have any of the following? Diabetes, hypertension, asthma, lung disease, cardiac, epilepsy, mention number if yes. Have you traveled outside county in past 30 days? If yes, mention the country name. Have you traveled inside India to other cities in past 15 days? If yes, mention the city name. Exposure to a confirmed COVID-19 case or to suspicious patient in last 15 days. Have you visited a health care facility in the past two weeks? This is the entrance of our hospital. In this times of crisis, during our Corona or COVID-19 crisis, how we have transformed the hospital to keep ourselves and as and our patients safe. Okay. At the entrance, we have a screening desk. One of our staff will screen the patient with a non-contact thermometer. This is how she's going to do it. It's a non-contact one. There's no contact between the patient and the instrument. We have a logbook even for the staff. As soon as they enter, they have to wash their hands. We have a separate room where they wash their hands and they come in. Even their temperature is recorded and maintained in a logbook. The patient is handed out a form where they have to fill it with their signature and the attendant signature if they have one along with them. There are a few questions that the patient has to answer based on things like whether they've had fever in the past, any history of travel abroad, any history of contact with a COVID-19 patient or were they screened for COVID-19, all these questionnaires, about nine are listed, they have to take yes or no and then sign beneath it. As soon as the patient reaches the screening desk, after the temperature is checked and the form is filled, they are provided with a mask which they have to wear, both the patient and the attendant. This is our registration desk. Initially, it was like we, we did not have these chairs just to maintain the social distance and we have ordered in this place so that the patient doesn't come in close contact with the staff member who is registering. Thank you for the patient hearing. We always ensure our patients are safe as well as we ensure